Hello and welcome to this with tutorial. In this video we are going to take a look at force touch or 3D touch and more specifically we're, we're going to take a look at peak and pop. So that is where you force touch on an object and you press a little bit harder and you get a preview and then when you uh, go through with a full touch then you then uh, then you transition over to the full page. So you, first you get a preview of that page and then you go to a second page, so the page that the preview is made out of. So I made a previous video on 3D Touch and that was Quick Actions, but in this video we're going to take a look at Peak and Pop, a video that has been requested by many of you. So let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. And we do that by double tapping right here. And I am going to make this a single view application and I'm going to name this peak and pop. And I am just going to save this on my desktop. And we are going to head straight over to the main dot storyboard. And here we are going to add some view controls. Because if you know, or as I tried to explain, peak and pop is all about first you get a preview and then you get, <clears throat> excuse me, a second view controller. So you have the first view controller, then you get a preview of the second view controller, and then you go to the second view controller. So here we have our first view controller, our initial view controller, but we need two more. So here is going to be, this is going to be our preview uh, view controller, and this is going to be our final view controller. So our user is going to force touch on this view controller right here. I'm just going to give it a background so that we see which one uh, we're currently at. So we have the orange, which is where we're going to do the force touching. Then we're going to get a preview and I'm just going to make this a, um, let's say I'm making a Wikipedia article. So I have a title here, for example, uh, that says, let's see, that says dogs. And uh, this is just going to be an example to demonstrate how this could work. So the, the, the idea is to give the user a sneak peek of what he's going to see in the next view control. So I could, for example, have a title and then I'm going to head over to Safari and I am going to find a, let's see, I'm going to head over to Dogs Wikipedia and then I'm going to take an image from Wikipedia Let's see, I'm going to take, or not from Wikipedia, I'm just going to take any random image. This one will do, and I'm going to save it in my downloads. Let's see, come on, no, I'm just going to drag it over here actually. And then I'm going to drag it over to Xcode. Let's see, I'm going to need this one. Then I'm going to drag it over to Xcode. Let's see, there we go. Copy items if needed. And then I'm going to have my image view going to drag that in. Of course, you don't need to, you know, add all of these elements. It's just in order for me to be able to demonstrate this, I'm going to lay out some elements in order to make this as, um, in order to just show you how you could do this. Okay, so this is my preview. I'm going to get an image of a dog. I'm going to get the title, dogs. And then I'm going to present the user with an article. So I'm just going to copy this one, this one, and add it to my third view controller. And the only difference is that I'm going to add a text view like this. That's going to talk a little bit about dogs, just like this. And it's going to extend down here. And I'm going to copy this text and paste it a couple of times so that we have some text. And there we go. So now that we have our layout, uh, we are going to jump over to our view controller because this is actually all we need to do in our storyboard, or we are going to do a couple of things, two things to be exact uh, in a couple of minutes. But right now let's focus on view controller because the first thing that we have to do is we have to check or ask the device if it is force touch or 3D touch compatible. And this is something that we do in our view to load method. So except or the second our application launches, we are checking if the device is compatible with 3D touch and if we can uh, continue with our endeavors of displaying a preview and all that good stuff. So the way we do this is we are, let's see, checking for support and let's see, 
just going to just add another p there. Uh, so we're going to say if trait collection dot force uh, touch capability is equal to UI force touch capability dot available. So we're checking if it is available. Now, if it is available, we're going to prepare it for uh, the preview and then that awesome segue where you, where you can preview that second view controller. The way we do that is we say register for previewing and we are going to need this one and we're going to say self and here as source view, we're just going to type in view and all of all this, the only thing that this line does is that it first of all checks is 3D touch available and if it is, we're going to prepare for that preview. And if it isn't compatible, we are going to do something here, isn't compatible. T com compatible. I get a lot of uh, comments from you commenting on my spelling. So now I'm trying to do this or trying to spell it as correctly as possible. And if I want to go overboard, I can also add one of these. Isn't compatible. Awesome. So now, as you can see, we have an error and that's because we haven't added the delegate yet. So that's what we're going to do now. If you just go up here, we are going to add the UI view controller previewing delegate. And then now, um, just as if we were to create table views, we get an error because we don't have all the methods implemented yet that we require in order to add this delegate. So we need to add two functions. And the first function is going to handle the previewing and the second function is going to handle the transition from the preview to the second view controller. So let's first add the preview capability and we do that by using a function named previewing context and the one we want is for location. So let's see if we got this one here. We got this one. You want to use that one that contains location and needs a UI view controller in return. So we need to return it a UI view controller. And here we are simply going to uh, define the peak uh, or the preview uh, view. And it's going to be equal to our storyboard dot uh, initiate view controller instantiate view controller and with an identifier so here we need to um, just specify which view controller we want to use as our previewing view controller and the way we do that is we head over to our storyboard and we select our previewing view controller so our second view controller and we give it an id and this one i'm just going to call uh, a view two, just like that. And then this one, I'm going to give the name view three, which we're going to need in a couple of seconds. So here we have our view controller. We are going to define view two, our second view controller. And then we're going to return this view controller that we just instantiated, preview view. So here we're just defining when the user force touches on our first view controller, we are going to preview this exact view controller. We're going to preview the view controller that has the identifier view two. Our next, our next task is going to be to enable the user to go from the preview screen to our second view controller. And in order for the user to be able to do that, we need a second function. This second function is named previewing context. So we're just going to, or it's actually exactly the same, but with a little tweak funk previewing context and the one that we want is exactly this one and what we need to do here is as you can see it doesn't need anything in return so we're just going to define our view controller so we're going to say um, final view which is going to be equal to storyboard so also here we instantiate oops I'm just going to get my charger so that I don't run out of battery back in two seconds and we're back. So we just continue with instantiating our view controller. So storyboard.instantiate view controller with identifier and our identifier is view three. So this is our final destination view controller and we're just going to show it 
by showing the view controller that we just defined, final view, and the sender is self. So here, this one shows final view controller, and this one shows preview. So here we are defining which view controller is our previewing view controller, and we, and we return it to our function. Here we are just segueing basically, or we're showing our final view controller, uh, which is our view three, and we just show our final view. Let's see what the problem is here. And we need to force on rapid, which we can do with certainty because we have a pretty high, or we know that this view controller actually does exist. So let's launch it here. I'm going to launch it on my iPhone 7 simulator. And now we should be able to force touch on our first view controller, then get a preview of our second view controller. And then when we continue force touching, we should see our third and final view controller. So let's see if that is indeed the case. So here is our view controller and I'm going to force touch here a little bit, give it a little bit, oops, there we have an error. Let's see what that error is. And the error that I made is I made it the title. So make sure that you don't make it the title. Don't do the same thing that I did. Don't make it the title, but make it the storyboard ID and also here make this the storyboard ID. Again, not the title, but make sure that you go over here the, to the identity inspector and then write uh, your ID right here. And now if you launch the app one more time, now it should work. So now I'm going to do some force touching. I'm going to press, and here I have my preview of dogs and I can continue the press and apply a bit more force and I will be segued and I have another error. Let's see what that is. And in order to solve that problem, I did need to select this view and also select use storyboard ID as the restoration ID. So I'm just going to do that for safety or just to make absolutely sure that this is going to work and to avoid my error. Also make sure that you select use storyboard ID as your restoration ID. And now if I launch it the third time, hopefully fingers crossed that this does work and here is my app and i'm going to apply some force here and i get my preview and i'm going to continue to apply more force and here i have my full article so everything is working now this is how you implement uh peak and pop 3d touch if there's if there are any more videos that you want to see in regards to 3d touch make sure that you leave a comment below and then i will take a look at them other than that, thank you for watching and make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching.